Hello everybody and welcome to this week's special edition podcast. I am the Grumpy Surfer Ads and the host of the podcast, but this week we'll be sharing the limelight with the Crest Podcast and the Pagan Boys. So before we start the podcast today, just throwing out a few discount codes as always. So for 15% off your North Course Surfing and Outdoor Gear, use the promotion code, capital letters, TGS pod 15 to get 15% off your purchase at the checkout from Northcore and also to get 20% off Bra Surf merchandise go to brawsurf.co.uk and use the code capital letters grumpy surfer to receive 20% off your merchandise purchase at Bra Surf okay so this week's podcast like I said before is in collaboration with the Crest Podcast and the Pagan Boys, local Welsh surfers, pro surfers from Porth Corn. Uh, in this, myself, Tom, Rhino, Pat, Logan and Callum all discuss the pros and cons of the new WSL format, the WSL Finals, the Challenger Series and the Qualifier Series as well and also what it is taking for a British surfer these days to get onto those round robin series. So please enjoy my conversation with the Crest Podcast and the Pagan Boys. Welcome to the Grumpy Surfer Podcast and the Crest Podcast, and I've been waiting to say this for a long time, in paid partnership, paid partnership. with <laughs> Elusive, Elusive. Are we allowed to be all right? All yeah, good. All good. good. Okay, I've got three questions that I'm going to start everything off with, I'm going straight into the deep end. So the three questions are, to you, Pat, Yeah. how are you? Good, good. You? Very good, mate. Have you surfed today? Uh, yeah, after work, had a quick surf at a local reef. Wasn't great, but I was on my own. It's yeah, fine. and what have you done today? Uh, just been in work. Uh, that's about it. Is that, is that about <laughs> it? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then yeah. Really elaborated on that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what did you? Uh, yeah, yeah, right, sorry. Logan? Yeah. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. What have you done today? Um, actually spent a lot of time with my family today, which is really nice, yeah. I didn't surf. No. Just, I knew your next question. <laughs> oh, I might be fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't we'll go, uh, go with Rhino. Hey, Ads. Yeah, good day today. Uh, busy one. Getting prepared for tomorrow's podcast with a special guest. And uh, if I can say who it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, tomorrow we're up at the Wave in Bristol with Gabe Davis. So I've uh, been reading yeah. through a Ooh. couple of scripts. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, that tomorrow with uh, presenting it with Rob Blythe. Nice. So... Uh, Looking forward to that. Another session at the way. Yes, indeed. We're on the... Booked in for five o'clock. Producer Dodd is here with us and he's going to be on uh, with us, Gabe, Rob, myself, and we're going to be surfing the advanced setting on the yeah. right. So, uh, yeah, look out, Bristol. Not it's losing... Nice. Up, so I was having trouble for anything worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not losing any more fins, then, no? Hopefully not. I'll have to go and look for my other one, which I lost last time, so... Just go to the, uh, go to the lost and found box, apparently. <laughs> should be in there by now. It's been, it's been long enough. It's been long enough. Tom? Oh, hang on. I'm stood behind the mic. Right, I have to just come in. Uh, so what have I been doing today? I've been in uh, teaching today. Yeah, and then uh, waiting for you guys to come around and making a birthday cake for ads. Well, <laughs> going to the <laughs> shop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't make that. No, I, I, I got it from the shop. And it was... Uh, yeah, it was a pound. I have to say, <laughs> considering you do a podcast, you're leaning over these microphones like you've never done this before, which is, <laughs> which is quite appealing. And then I'm going to try and get this right. It's Callum. Callum, same three questions to you. So, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. What have you been doing today? Uh, working. And have you surfed today? I haven't surfed today. I got home a bit late and then found out Pat went. <laughs> what about the swell that's just been recently running over the last few days and over the weekend, lads? Have we got in there or what? Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Um, surfed a little secret little spot in Swansea, first thing, and then spent the rest of the day in Aberavon, which was pretty pumping. 
Didn't like the drop in tide, but it was real good. Yeah. Callum, what about you? Yeah, I surfed um, Aber Avenue with Pat, and then I surfed one of the beaches run by here. Got uh, two good barrels, but the water made me feel it the next couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking cans of Coke on tap since. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, top tip with that is just drinking loads of cans of Coke. Yeah. I, did a, I did a bit of a kayaking thing a while back, and one of the guys said to me, so you don't get Wales disease, just drink loads of coke, so it washes you all out. What's Wales disease? I thought that that was. A, I was wondering whether that was a real thing, but it, yeah, apparently it is, isn't it? Yeah, because like, you, you can get super ill from it. It's when rats piss into the uh, rivers, right, right, right. and like if you've got canals and stuff like that, it, they don't go anywhere, so it's quite yeah. stagnant. You've been in Aberavon Cal, so. And stop licking, stomach free, yeah. <laughs> stop licking toilet seats. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, what about yourself, mate? Did you surf over the weekend? Yes, I managed to, actually went down your way, surf Croyd on Friday, which is pumping out a full day of it, and then spent the rest of the weekend renting foamies to people who were watching other people have fun, <laughs> which is really good. It's like surfing just boomed at the minute, and it's still, the beach is so busy still, so um, yeah, didn't really surf much over the weekend, I just worked, so that's all right. I get it, I get in, I get in enough. The big man, Rhino, what about yourself, dude? So I didn't get in over the weekend, because I sort of did my uh, back in slightly, but I did surf on Saturday and I surfed in Rest Bay, um, which was pretty good. It was the uh, it was the beginning. It was pretty much the biggest day of the swell, the hurricane swell. Sam, wasn't it? That um, was Friday, was it? Yeah, Friday. was it? What time did it? Yeah, for Saturday, Friday. So I surfed in Rest Bay. It was solid, um, and they were filming. Casualty down there, and I heard today that I might be on yeah. casualty. So, <laughs> yeah. so that was yeah. Apparently, there was one of the ways that uh, I caught at high tide. They managed to get, and you said you might have seen it. So oh, I look forward to seeing that anyway. So. Yes. You didn't pay for it. Uh, yeah, I'll have to go and see them. Well, you get some royalties from it. And hopefully, <laughs> actually, by the performance I put in, no, I'll have to be paying them for sure. But uh, no, it was good. It was a good swell. It was a really yeah. good swell. Don't think anyone did much work Friday. That's the main thing, though, really, isn't it? I mean, like when those sort of swells come through, I think everybody that you know, who's half a man themselves that surfs, just just gets in the water, and I know pretty much, you know, I work what ten minutes from the beach from from Coyd and Saunton, and as soon as anything yeah. comes through, pretty much everyone knows that if I'm not answering the phone or on the computer or in the gym, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm in the water somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not telling them where I'm going either. Yeah. That's but the thing it. is, that swell it was on Magic Seaweed for about a week before, at least five days for sure. And because uh, I surfed a week, and I think I remember Brad Hawker saying, he goes, oh, have you seen the swell for next Friday? It's like, it's ages away. Yeah. And it was like, but... And, it, and it's it's me, I never looked that far because I'm like, it's going to change. Yeah. The wind's going to go on shore yeah. or something. But it, it, it was pretty much bang on, that yeah. swell, wasn't it? The only shame was the big tides. Yeah, that really killed it, didn't it? Yeah. Well, there's another big one coming through in the end of next week as well. It looks uh, promising, but the winds are quite... Westerly, so. say a bit of wind swell to it, isn't it? Yeah, so find, those, find those little secret spots, I reckon. Yeah, well, yeah. Langland. <laughs> <laughs> super secret. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Super secret spot. Yeah. 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 Bring your dry ropes. <laughs> yeah. I think that moves us on to talk a little bit about, um, well, me and Tom have had the chat, haven't we? And we, we were going to have a little chat about the WSL finals and, and the... Uh, and the CT and and the Challenger series. What were we saying, Tom? Oh yeah, uh, right. Me and Rhino are swapping the chair over because Rhino's got to go and get his uh, game thing ready. Yeah, we were, we talk about that. I wanted to ask you before that though, because we did just have. I said I mentioned we had some birthday cake. You've had a big birthday ads. Yeah, I was four, I was forty on Saturday. Oh, happy birthday, your pen boy, Yeah. Yep. Yeah, th thanks. Yeah. I, I've. Uh, I'm, do you know what I've. Um, it, it, even though it's a milestone birthday for a lot of people, it's the same as any birthday. You never really feel different no. about it. It's just a number the way I see it is, I can still beat up half the people that are in my unit. I'm still fitter than ninety percent of the people in the Royal Marine, so I can't argue that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way I see it. I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> I say that, that was a big play, claim I put out there, so I don't want people to, to come to smash me, right? It's a figure of speech. And uh, the other thing we, I wanted to ask you about before we talked about that WSL thing was uh, you've just been on a trip to Guam. So there's all of us like now, like oh, I know these boys have been on these holidays they call it the wqs we call it holidays but uh, you, you've been out in guam and that just suddenly came out of nowhere uh, like 
Yeah. So from, from being home for like two years and then it's like, go on. Yeah, so I was, um, I didn't think I would get a, another surf trip out of, you know, being in the Marines because I leave next year, my, my, um, my 22 years is up, so I leave in May, but my terminal leaves in February, um, so I didn't think I'd get another surf trip out, uh, out of the Navy, and um, I was on my summer leave in uh, over August, and I got a phone call from a friend of mine that um, helps run adventure training for the Navy, and he basically said, do you want to come out and do some surf coaching in, in Guam, and I was like, I'll chat with the missus, and she was like that. Yep, yeah, go, brilliant. And wow. then once, so one of the lads um, that I've been a surf coach with now for about 20 years, um, he got onto it too. So, yeah, within the space of four weeks of being asked, we were, uh, you know, at the airport at Bristol, you know, good to go. Wow. Um, which was quite eventful to get out there because it took us two and a half days to get there in the end. Was... Yeah, because you got diverted and then that, that bit blew me away. It was like one of your flights had gone wrong or you had the COVID <laughs> passes had gone wrong or something, wasn't it? Yeah, so we, we got to Bristol and uh, we were going to fly to South Korea originally, yeah. um, but they said that our visas w were wrong. They weren't, but somewhere along the process, it got lost in translation, so we couldn't get on the flight. Um, so we ended up getting to the, into a hotel um, in Bristol and then we had to get on a flight six o'clock the next morning otherwise our PCR test would run out right so um, we had some military cards all the guys that you know were high ranking listen that were in our group. Boys, if you get a travel going wrong right now um, listen to this what happens when you're in the military <laughs> yeah so, so basically they got onto the phone made some phone calls down in a, a place called Tamarair in, 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 in Portsmouth and um, they bought us all brand new flights that night for ten of us, which cost thirty three grand. So we so we then so we flew at six o'clock the following morning. We were still in the airport at eight o'clock that night. So the PCRs don't run out. Yeah, they so have the to leave Britain yeah, by six a.m. So um, we then yeah, <laughs> you so, get more PCRs. Well, you just gonna get more PCRs. <laughs> you could have bought like, so, three so days. The, so the whole point of this trip was the uh, carrier strike group, which has got the Queen Elizabeth and HMS Defender, HMS Kent and a load of other shipping um, is over on the eastern seaboard by China and it's going across the Pacific towards the western <coughs> seaboard of America. So when they stop off at different places, they ask if they can do something, you know, to get off ship so they don't get pissed up and smash the towns that they're on. Up. Yeah. They mm -hmm. want to do something different. So that's where the AT stuff come, came in. So we got asked to go and provide... Um, surfing out in, out in Guam um, which gave us basically once we got there we had like about a day to go and recce some areas and there was only one beach on the whole of the island which was a, um, a sand beach that faced out towards the Pacific that you could actually coach on because everywhere else is covered with reef and real sharp coral reef too so yeah that's you know, how so the, the soldiers trip have got to surf. The really. soldiers have got to surf. <laughs> yeah, that's right. amazing, yeah. isn't it? That's amazing. Yeah. That's Charlie, what, don't Charlie don't surf. Charlie <laughs> doesn't That's what uh, that's what Carlos Munoz needed to do when he needed to get to that big yeah, yeah, right. He needed to say, right, yeah. bring the military up. Oh yeah, so anyway, yeah, uh, CT we were going to talk about then, wasn't it? And the changes to it. Are they even called... We'll have to check with you boys. Is it even called the CT, the yeah. QS anymore now? Still called the mm. well, men's championship tour. Still called championship the CT. tour, women's championship tour, and then yeah. finals. The only thing that's different is the 10,000s. They're not 10,000s, they're Challenger Series. Challenger Series. CSs. Or CSs, and then the bit before the Challenger Series is now just the, uh, the regional, regional, regional QSs. QSs. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're gonna, we, so we thought we'd do like... Since we got you boys here, we're gonna do like a sort of the nerds round. Yeah, we got the nerds. So that's so we're gonna do a bit of a roundup of like what we make of the of the international season. But then the aim is to sort of sag into asking you boys about like you know where where you sort of fit into it all and you know where you're going from there. Um, so first of all, then what what do we think of the change in formula this year? Do, shall like I go the, first? The or finals or next year's proposal? The, this year's proposal as it ran this year with the finals and then you can tell us about next year's proposal after that then Pat. Sorry. Right, so on, what did we think of it? Sick, I, I thought they did so well considering we were all stuck, some of us still in lockdown when they had events on. Um, I thought they did really well to like get a tour going. Um, wasn't like the usual tour was it? Yeah. Um, and then I actually really liked the finals as well. I thought the WSL finals worked really well. Did you? Don't know about anyone else, but I, it was like, I was gripped to the TV the whole day. Right. So, okay. I enjoyed the whole tour. I enjoyed watching um, the Australian leg especially. I thought that it mixed up 
bringing out other surfers that n- wouldn't normally do that well. Do you mean like Mormon Sibilich or? Yeah, uh, Connor Coffin. I was kind of glued to right. watching a lot of it. Even you know people call him boring. Yeah. He kind of showed like his in beach breaks that he was pretty good. Um, and then I thought the finals were epic. I was glued, like Logan said, to the team, well, to the laptop the whole time. Yeah. Me and Ads, we've been debating it a bit, haven't we? You were quite into the W. I, I was, I'm a bit critical of the idea of it, but you, what, what were you saying, Ads? You were quite into the idea of the I, I thought it was good. I think if you, they, they should really try and run <coughs> it like, do, do any of you watch the NRL? So the uh, no. National Rugby League in, in Australia. So the way that they do it is they have a whole season and then when they get to the very end of the season, whoever comes top of the league then gets a trophy, so they are the league winners. But then the top six then go through and do a finals, right. like the WSL yeah. finals. So there is a end of tour, so there would be a end of tour winner, like you know Gabriel Medina came top, didn't he? So mm-hmm. he would have got the winner's trophy, but then they would have all gone through into like a playoff, so to speak, yeah. with a ultimate, you know, um, an, an ultimate winner at the end. But I think who's the world champion then? The winner of the tournament at the end. Or the winner <laughs> of the so the world, yeah. the world champion would be the winner of the tournament, the tournament. but the like the league winner. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like the tour you know, winner. Almost, yeah, would yeah. be like the would, would be like the tour winner. Yeah. I think everyone was really happy this year because Gabby and Chris yeah. won. Yeah, if I was going to say, if it, if it had it, been... Yeah, one, say, like, won. Morgan Sibylik somehow went through that draw and won, yeah. it would be, like... Uh, Tatiana like, Weston went, yeah. and Morgan Sibylik. And Sibirik I really wanted would've, Tatiana would've, to win, but... Yeah. I just think, yeah, I it would have... Sally everyone's... Fitzgibbons yeah. and Felipe Toledo to win, because the first thing I saw at the start of the year when they announced that plan, is yeah. that I was like, right, so you basically put in two guys... Who can't win a world title because they bottle it? <laughs> yeah, in their wins, yeah and that's what I think. And you're giving them their favourite wave of the tour, uh, yeah. and they've got to win one comp to be world champion. And f- Toledo Neely did it, didn't he? Yeah, I feel like I just I, I I really like Toledo, but I just don't think he like woke up that morning and was ready to deal with the pressure of like if you beat Gabby today, you're world champion. Like Gabby's just got a way of dealing with that. Well, he had two years ago. It was if you beat Kanoe Garashi today, you've got to, in Portugal. You've yeah. got to get through like one round at Pike to be world champion. He blew yeah. that, didn't he? Then didn't get through the one round yeah. anyway. He uh, looked- you know, years before, you know, he had to get through only a tiny bit in Pike another time. Yeah. You know, it's like I think he he's looked- got to do something different, doesn't he? Yeah, he looked against Italo, like he was not gonna fall against Italo. Yeah. He looked amazing. Gabby in the first round, I reckon he looked amazing. And I thought, like, some of the scores, I thought Philippe was getting a little bit, like, kind of harshly scored. Like, Gabby's back foot was really high yeah. compared to the one he fell on the air yeah. at the end. But in the last um, match, was it called? Game? I think they like, were the last matches, Yeah, the last they? match. He, like, you know, he was going for a lot of punts and, like, kind of, like, he was falling and he just didn't look like he had the same... Mm. Rhythm. Like, yeah, like, dri- like mindset, like, he wasn't going to fall. Like, he kind of looked like he was beaten by Gary. Do you know what I think he needs to do? This is a tough thing to do, but if you look like Serena Williams did it, you know, whoever else, it, 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 he needs, unfortunately, to say to his dad... Bye. You've been great, but you're not my coach yeah. anymore. And he needs to... He, and he needs to get... One of the top Gabby did in the world. Gabby did it. He has, mm-hmm. kind, he has kind of... Tyson Fury did it as well. Yeah. Oh, there we are. He did really? kind of do it for half... Dodd's got his he did do it for most of the... <laughs> he did it for most of the year, though, because his dad didn't go to ours and stuff. Yeah. But who was coaching Toledo then? Yeah, but at Trestles, he was. Right, oh, so... Yeah. His dad Ricardo Toledo was there yeah. at Trestles. But then he's also... He's, he's coached to, lead, to like, win yeah. Trestles too, though, so... Yeah. He kind of, like, all... He's got another coach. He's got another coach now, though, he works with. The guy... Can't remember his name. Who like discovered Italo and stuff? The guy that used to work for Oakley, and he he basically coaches half of the Brazilian store, mate. Does he? Yeah, mm, works okay. for like um like the like the Chianco brothers and stuff. How important is now in modern pro surfing the role of the coach? Do you guys think? Like when when you guys are at an event where you've got someone. <clears throat> On the beach, doing you know, like getting that coach down there the day before, on, getting them to do like if, if you make the comparison, the producer Dodd's mentioning boxing, right? 
up just over the road here when they had the Open Masters, right? Like, you know, George Schofield, don't you? You know, does our artwork. He was, um, he was playing there, and he said the week before the tournament, the course was covered in caddies just going around it with notebooks, playing mm. eighteen holes every day with notebooks, and the caddy in golf is everything to when these guys can go and these guys can then rock up play one practice round and then the next day they will compete mm-hmm. and they'll put in one of the best rounds you've ever seen here and that's what Bernard Langer did in that event now in modern surfing is that what the coach does like Llewellyn Whitaker when we had him on earlier this year he was telling us about being out there you know like mapping that wave in El Salvador you know doing Leon Glatz's work for him and all that is that I think um <clears throat> for me anyway well I feel like once it gets to the contest, they're just like your, your they're like your like soundboard, and they like they take all you have to worry about them when you've got a coach is turning up and performing. Mm. Like so, it's not always you're not worried about when you're at the event. Oh, you need to do your turns like this and do your turns like that. Mm. I feel like for me, the coach is more important for improving my surfing. But if you can have a coach at an event, I just think it helps massively because they just sort everything out and all you've got to do is just turn up and go the waves are there and pal out there so before. You come on you come on here now, right? It's it's, it's the radio four of surfing on the crest half of this couch. D- this side. You're you're the what would you be? Radio, you'd be BF what's it called? The Armed Forces. BF the BF PS <laughs> surfery. And or you'd be five live you'd be, wouldn't you? Sort of like I don't know, I'd be I'd be some like pirate radio station <laughs> up, up the coast of Penzance. <laughs> Gonna ask, ask you a proper hard news night question here now about yourself. Now you got an interference in Costa de Caparica earlier this year. Yeah. Would that have happened if you'd had a coach on the beach calling you around, pointing out like you had a mix up, didn't you, over like who was in priority and what colours? Yeah. You could, um, you could be all told them, don't get an interference. Yeah. <laughs> I knew not to get because they were being fussy with them. Cause it was small. Yeah. And it but that one was just that one was hectic. Yeah. But Maybe not that, but I certainly could have got better results with a coach, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was with Joel Gray in France, and I felt really confident before it got cancelled. Yeah. Okay. Just, it's nice sometimes as well having someone, when you've got your mates, but when I've done them on my own, you don't have anyone going like, well, you look good even compared to the rest of the pack, you know? Just giving you that little bit of confidence. Though. Confidence. Just so like. here's a question to all of you because I, I I'm quite interested in this myself. So I mean we we talked about this earlier, which kind of leads into the Olympics as well. Is funding for you guys to have surf coaches and because you know you're at, you're at that verge of being on well, the highest level in the in the UK. Is there enough funding stream coming through, or do you think there will be in the future to be able to, like the Aussies, for instance, they have surfing programs where that where they've got all their pros and you know they've got strength and conditioning coaches and everything's basically paid for them because we're through their sponsorship. Do you think something that's likely to going to happen to us, or do you feel that's something that you would like as you know progressing towards that professionalism? Yeah, definitely, there's like a massive lack of. Like funding, I don't know whether it's because we're, you know, it's like relatively like new sports to like Olympics and stuff, but like there's been a lot of like promises and a lot of talk, but um, and, and like, oh yeah, we're gonna get it, but for definitely for me and Pat, it's like, well, we're here right now trying our absolute hardest to yeah. fund this thing and just feel sometimes like, oh, nothing's getting done, but um, yeah. for us, it's a lot of like self funding. So working at a surf school, we flip sofas with his dad, you know, like, and then doing those cheesy Instagram posts and stuff, like. It's just what you've got to do to be able to fund like the thing we're passionate about, you know. So definitely in the minute, it's more like ourselves that are funding it. But it'd be nice if maybe like governing body mm-hmm. or like Sport Wales, if there is money there, like it'd be great to see it at it, some point. There's know, there's more whispers now because of the Olympics. Definitely more talk about it, which is good. Yeah. Which is good. I haven't more seen any of it, yeah. but <laughs> there's more whispers. Yeah. So, so here's another question, um, and this is no you know strike on you guys at all. If there are people in the UK that start perform, performing at a high level without surf coaches and you know the ultimate sponsorship that's pushing funding behind you. Do you feel that that might actually influence you being able to you know get to that level, or does it take somebody like Sky Brown, who is a UK surfer stroke skateboarder, performing in the next Olympics to advertise the UK as like 
a surfing superpower to be able to put you guys on the map to an extent? Yeah, potentially. I, I mean, mm. I, they always talk about like, for, for lots of funding to get going, they need to be like, oh, are we going to get a medal? Like, that's the thing, I think. Mm. And um, it's kind of like, well, just because we might not get a medal in the next Olympics, you, you know, if you never give the funding, you're never going to get any medals. So I'm not really sure how it works. When do you start the program? Yeah, when do you start that program and like, who do you include in it? Um, mm. I mean, Sky Ground would be great, wouldn't it? But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure how it works, but... I feel it is a bit of a catch twenty two situation with it, with it, or with regardless whether you're Scottish, Irish, English, or Welsh, you're going to have to, to a certain extent, fund yourself around the world to to be able to do that. I mean, a friend of mine who I've done the podcast before, Chris Sherrington, you know, he went to the Olympics. He's a Commonwealth gold medalist in judo, but he basically funds himself around the world mm -hmm. to perform at that high level. You know, in these, you're not talking. A few thousand pounds. You're talking tens of thousands of pounds to go to Russia to get to. Yeah, yeah for sure. You know, to a certain extent, like though, it's an, it's an investment, isn't it? Because you know, you know, Rhino, you know, he's just sat back from the sofa. He's still in the room with us. You know, Rhino, Rhino's competitive career probably is one of the reasons why his career, you know, in in distribution and repping has been successful. It's because he's got like you know, fought for those couple of years. Mm -hmm to get that sort of image and personality in place. And I suppose to a certain extent, it's like, you guys make a good fist to this. If you if you want surf schools with your names on the side of them, if you want, you know, like open up a local bar on a beach somewhere, you know, in, in, or, you know, you can open businesses and people are interested in it because they want to be around guys who are like an ex-pro and you kind of, you know, it is a sort of an investment in what you do from there, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, you just like... Would you agree with that right now? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swap the chair and let Ryan <laughs> speak a second. Yeah, I think from um, my point of view, I mean, where I was at your age, I think my headspace was a little bit different in terms of the goals that I had. I think that I wanted to perhaps head to like the Welsh, British team, but and then like I think we we spoke about this before. My 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 goals kind of ended there, and my aspirations really didn't really stretch to if there was an Olympics. I don't think I really would have at that point and to be honest I didn't think I was good enough but obviously with you guys with the coaching and everything that you've got like that self-belief to really sort of to push you you yeah. know um, is that is that like have you got like the one thing I always because like, I'm watching you guys as everybody is on Instagram and stuff like what is like in terms of like your long term goal <laughs> like where are you at with it go on is Logan it... you go first <laughs> you're looking around at everyone else you go first son uh, I don't know for me like I'm not in it to like there's so many easier ways to make a load of money. Could have gone to uni and like got a good degree and made loads of money. So it's definitely not making money. It's just like I want to be the best possible surfer I can be. Mm. I do have like very specific goals, mm. um, but like an overall goal, just be like literally, just finish my surfing career and think right. I gave that my absolute all. Yeah. I wasn't at partying every weekend. I literally was like trying my hardest. And then whatever happens when you try hardest, you know, I'd be pretty, pretty happy with. What is the very specific goal? Um, well, you're not allowed to say you. I can say it just like most people. People would have laughed at me if they if I said when I was younger that I'd win a Welsh. But exactly. my, my main goal is uh, I'd love to win a QS. So I'd be like big one and to make the Challenger Series. Obviously, once you then get those goals, try not to like be you're try not to stop. Yeah. Then reassess your goals. But my goals at the minute they they're my two really big ones that I'd like to I'd like to achieve for sure. Callum, uh, my goals are a lot smaller than. Logan's and Pat's, but mine is to win a Welsh title. So I've got hopefully a few years left. Well, I'm really young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Twenty two. Plenty years. of time there. <laughs> plenty of time, but yeah, that is my my only goal in surfing, to be honest. Yeah. So, Come on, me? Pat. Pat, that uh, is the deepest podcast, aren't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the goal setting. Yeah. Feeling like about training. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. My main goal, well, they're pretty similar to Logan, to be honest, but to win a QS at right now, that's all my focus, and to get into the top 10 in Europe so I can go on the Challenger Series. That's where most of my motivation when I wake up in the morning is. And then one of my main goals, it's really kind of awkward saying, but my main goal is, not my main goal, but one of my main goals is just I want to be the be like the best British surfer, like the most successful. You know, that's just I don't know where I got that goal from, but it's just always 
There's nothing something I write down on my wall. Or... There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But uh, talking about the Challenger series and uh, what's the series called before the Challenger series? Is it kind of... Just, I think it's literally just called regional. regionals now, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the, the regional regionals QS. first. <laughs> yeah, so what, what's the thoughts on that? Because you have to uh, be in, is it the top... Ten. Top Ten, ten in yeah, Europe, and yeah. then you get loaded onto the Challenger series, and then it's ten people from each of the separate regions. It's pretty. I like. I really like that format, and yeah. for people like me and Pat who like have to fund it ourselves, it makes it so much, much so much more simple. You just go to your regionals, you go to Europe, which is cheap, you know, because we before we'd be looking at like, oh, you could do this one thousand yeah. dollars and you know go to Israel or wherever it's just so much easier now it was scary before yeah well, and so scary like you'd go from doing <laughs> the UK Pro and thinking oh I'm pretty good on the UK Pro so oh, I want to start doing the QS and you you got, sort of looked at it and went well how do I do I go there do I mm. do I which event do you pick yeah up and you were just do, like yeah. we were just like whoa this is kind of hectic but now it's like oh, I can work and train and then I can go to Europe and then Hopefully, get in the top ten, and it's then a pass. yeah, it's yeah. just like a nice like you Such know like champ. football. You go to League One, League Two, mm. Championship. You know, it's like it's yeah. It seems way more in your head. You can like justify right. I'm gonna give myself three years to get there, and three years to get there, two years. I, yeah, yeah. I got a bit of a theory, right? I stand by. You know, obviously, both 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 in my day job and my night job. You know, I think about all of these things a lot. You know, and and acquisition, skill, learning, and things like that. And I kind of I've always believed that there isn't really any such thing as, like, just a raw talent. Obviously, like, I understand that, you know, a, a four-foot-tall guy is never going to slam dunk, you know, or that, you know, or that a, a ten-foot-tall guy is not necessarily going to surf a one-foot wave. But re really, within that, you know, I don't really believe in talent. And I think that, like, if you there's only one thing anyone needs to be good at, and that's learning. And if you're good at learning, you'll get good at what you're passionate about and what you enjoy doing, right? So you boys are obviously very good at learning. And then being very good, being good at learning, I think, is just down to one simple thing, and it's being able to honestly reflect on what you're doing and what the next step up is doing. Yeah. What's the gap, right? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you another deep question here now, right? Both of you talking about going on to the European regional QSs, right? You've been on them this year. What is the gap? Like, in your surfing then, Pat, right? Because we see you on day to day and you're a fabulous surfer. Same Logan, same for you, Cal, right? What, what is, for you, what is the bit of your surfing that the guys beating you this year had that you didn't and that you're going to have next year on, that, on yeah. that QS? I feel like the QS is everything. Like, down, like you're surfing, your decision-making, everything. But for me, the biggest thing I've worked on is just, like, being more, um, more like flowier, but just like linking major turns. You watch the top guys, and say for someone like Ramsey, you can basically put him in anywhere, and he's gonna find a way. But he's gonna do, yeah, yeah, he's gonna do two majors, and get say a seven point five, mm -hmm. and he can do that twice in twenty minutes, pretty much anywhere you put him. And for me, I've just worked on being slightly more like top to bottom and just being able to find that wave where I link two major maneuvers sort of in like being adaptable in all them conditions. Mm. I feel like if I was in, say, I don't know, like maybe like a close to shore wave where I could do like quick big backhand turns or go left and do a big air, I know I could hold my own. But being adaptable to, say, Portugal, where it's big and onshore and difficult, like, and just being able to get 12 points plus in every condition. Mm. I love the way that if people were videoing this and you could see the visuals, you were painting the picture with your hands. <laughs> yeah. It was like that, yeah. fingers in barrels yeah, and then yeah. doing this yeah. with your hands. So that's amazing. <laughs> I can see it now. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's the, it's the, the way he's got his tracky bottoms on and his woolly hat and all that, right? <laughs> I, 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 if someone was filming it, this would be one of those little old bits of footage that, like, when they make instead of the documentary, you know, like the Pachymentary, you know, like, you know, they'd stick it on, it's like, yeah. here he is, like, sitting on the sofa, you know, scratching his nuts and going, yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> Callum, next one. Um, for me to work on my surfing, 
I've been trying to just look at these two to be honest because they've both they've matured so fast, especially the past like eighteen months. Um, like Pat for his size is incredibly powerful and fast, and I've just been trying to like work on how like I would do a turn at any speed of that is crazy, and then looking at Logan's turns like. He links a lot of turns really well and I'm trying to use that in it as well. So it's two good guys to like to use in um, in my own surfing. Just watching Connor Coffin. Yeah. What do you want? What do you want from your surfing? Like? Oh, I, if I come out the water happy and I know I've done a few good whacks, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> if I get barreled, I'm even happier. Easily, please. You, you've been described as as one of the most barreled men in the Gower, Carl. A few times I've been told. The biggest frother. GTH. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a go, but. Um, He's not scared. <laughs> no, nothing to be scared of, is there? You worry about that when you're scared. <laughs> uh, coming back to what we, we started, we're talking about the WSL finals here before we went into those, re- ads jumped us into those real deep questions there, which I think is, you know, brilliant, because it's like straight away we're into, the, we're into some pretty unique, you know, points of view from you guys. Should we just, like... What is the sort of verdict on it then? Is it like keep it, change it? In our opinions on the on the on it, what what, what do you reckon, Ads? Is it like I keep it the they, way it was, change it, do it different? I reckon they keep it. Uh, I've again, I listen to a lot of podcasts as well, especially with my commutes, and there are sort of little bits of speculation about they're going to tweak it, but I don't really know how they can. Mm. Um, I love the idea that I know you said you know it would be a bit of a cop out if um, Morgan Siblich won the yeah. event but you imagine being that guy who's got yeah. to do you know four what eight heats yeah. basically to win the whole event it's sick isn't it if yeah. that so guy cool. wins that then he deserves like, it yeah. no yeah I don't think it's a cop out I just thought I was just saying I think you people to... I think there would have been more of an uproar if that happened yeah but by uh, you know I think if they did do that league win at the end It'd be yeah. pretty cool too. Yeah, but for sure. Oh, well. Anyone who deals with that pressure on the day, I mm. think, deserves the trophy. I mean, in the conclusion, from what I, I'm going off on the fucking tangent there, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's good. I enjoyed watching it. I thought it was very watchable, and uh, and I think it has some sort of like engagement because you are actually rooting for people towards the end, and there's an end result, not just like mm. you know. Gabriel Medina could get knocked out in, I don't know, yeah. the fourth round of the mm. pipe, but he still wins, yeah. but he doesn't win pipe. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone watched that and could look away. Mm. I think it did what the WSL wanted it to do. You watched it and you were, like, glued fixed to the Surfing's team. needed it as well, isn't it? Because I've watched so many comps where it's literally background while I'm doing other things, mm-hmm. where that one day you are glued to your TV or whatever it is, and you ain't moving. You probably texting your mate saying how good this heat is and mm. how good that wave was, but you're just sitting there listening to Kelly Slater and Mick Fan until yeah. absolutely oh, that was the that was so epic. So yeah. Yeah. They they made the show, and I think if if it they can top it next year or just keep the ball rolling for the next couple of years, and I can't see them going backwards. Mm. Do you do you think it devalues the rest of the year though? No, because you still yeah. have the achievement to get top five, haven't they? Yeah. And um, they, I think I heard I heard somewhere it's been like over 20 years since Gabby and Italo were in the water it was like over 20 years since they had the last world title show off in the water happen like the world title was won in the water it was the Andy Kelly wasn't it mm. right yeah well, so Gab, Gabby and Italo in it, the So and they went right that was amazing they must have had loads of viewers oh so, they, so the they, idea is that, it hit that we won that every year right you, you've destroyed the point I was about to make then with that stat <laughs> you've, you've done me at stats I'm supposed to be the stat guy <laughs> with the, the Sydney <laughs> so I was going to say I was going to say that um if you look at, we're looking at, uh, you know, they've watched other sports the WSL have, haven't they, and thought about what they're trying to do, yeah. right? Now, the NFL is in there partly as the model. Like, you know, in the NFL, teams joke about how, like, you do not want to be the top team in your conference at the end of the year because you're not going to win yeah. the Super Bowl. You're going to get beaten in the playoffs, you know? It's like, and teams think only about get to the playoffs, get to the playoffs, get to the playoffs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if, in the, in the regular season, the process of being, like, getting yes. to the playoffs showed you to be the best team... All that is, is you, you've had a good training run in for like the important bit, the playoffs, yeah, and they right. think, right, it's the playoffs, you know? So in terms of that format, like, I wonder if they want to sort of put that playoff stage of the season as a bigger thing than like the run into it, because it felt like 
all those big comps. But that's, then if you look at another sport really successful worldwide over, we look at football, right? Not American football, just straightforward football, right? There are those history making moments in football when like seasons get ended in the last second of the season, you know, like Michael Thomas's goal in 1980, 1990 or 1989 and, and Sergio Aguero scoring in the last second of the Premier League season. Aren't those moments so special because they don't come around every year? So isn't it the case that like, the, you know, the fact that some years it's done before the Pipe Masters means that those years when the Pipe Masters becomes like, who's going to, you know, but then you've, you've killed my yeah, point because I, I suppose that is too rare, isn't I, it? Like, I prefer it is, this year. It is to, literally yeah. Andy Kelly and then it's on yeah. Medina. But then you look at it it's as well. Rare. So it's all, all these competitions, they're really long and drawn out. Mm. Yeah. The only way that you could probably improve the WSL finals is probably by having more people in it. Yeah. Which then extends the event. Yeah. They fit the whole event, the women's and the men's, into one single day, not like three yeah. days. And that's where I think people lose the viewership from watching it is because if I've got to be engaged with something for two to three days, yeah. I'm not going to turn my telly on for a full, you know, it's 12 possible, hours each yeah. day. You're just yeah. not going to do it, which means you're going to miss certain things. Mm. So if you know that that's the, day. the finals are going to be on at this time because it's programming to be that all round about yeah. that time, you can watch... Gabby yeah. and Philip Toledo do a three round, um, you know, yeah. a three heat yeah. final off. You'll make time for that, won't you? Yeah, and it's more engaging. I think I'm changing my mind live on you. You, you got me convinced. You needed us. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was, did you not enjoy the day? Did you not enjoy watching it? Did you watch it and go, oh, that wasn't very good? I, I did, good. yeah. I, I thought it was really? amazing. I oh, thought, you thought, thought it was amazing. Right, yeah. I, uh, I thought... I was a bit frustrated they didn't pick slightly smaller trestles. Yes, yes, yes. Thing. The uh, morning, well, at the start, yeah. like Steph was chattering yeah. all over. I thought this is the worst thing ever. Yeah, I um, oh, no. yeah it, but I thought by the end it was sick. Yeah, yeah, and I wanted Felipe Toledo Felipe to win a world title. Felipe was just I did. mental. He looks good. Um, what's happening while well, they do next year then, Pat? Oh, what's the structure next year? Off? Um. What for the final? For the whole thing, you were saying that they've changed this. Are they changing the format? They changed the, the, they've changed the, the, they've changed the tour. They've right. changed the stops. Read the stops. Out. Oh, just the stops. You yeah. Do you want me to read it out? Uh, yeah. Go on. You pick it up on your phone while I. While I, got it up. We'll oh, I, got, I got it up. You've got it ready. So it's then. pipe, and then to sunset, which is new. Amazing. Um, so then big, sort of bells. Beach good guys are gonna do well at the start of the year. Uh, Portugal, then bells. Then Margaret is this, River. Is, this, is every one of these events men and women? Both uh, I times? believe so. It is yeah, the, okay. the new tour is all the same. Yeah. Um, so it's Bells, then Margaret River. Yeah. So no snapper next year. That's a Challenger Series event now. Okay. Well, that's the first Challenger Series event. There's no snapper. That's uh, probably a good um, so And then from Margaret the River, incentive. they go to G Land. Uh, that oh. since isn't like Luke Egan the reigning champ or something yeah, yeah, like 1997 Cooks yeah. Pro that video did yeah. you have that one in your rack I like, did yeah the, with the prodigy on it love a little bit of VHS actually oh goodness <laughs> yeah, so what, chat, a, what so, a contest best cont <laughs> best surf ever for any contest ever better the surf than they had for that Mexico one I reckon that was no way so then Trestles I, so I don't know if they're going to go to Trestles again I don't think they are then Rio then J-Bay, then Chopes, and then the top five will be decided at Chopes for the finals, which is to be confirmed. When's, which, the, when's the mid-year cut? Uh, I can't remember where the mid-year cut is. I believe it's... After G-Land. Because the first half of that Yeah, year, I, think it's like it's after, I think it's after G-Land. Yeah. I think no. it's after G-Land. It's they? the top 12. It's, it's they, 12 they, and up, isn't it? Yeah, but no one goes... I think after the mid-year cut-off, it just... Cuts makes off. this tour yeah. smaller yeah. for yeah. the last half but of the year. No, but no you're, you're, if, you're in, if you're in the top 12, then you're on for 2023. Wow. Yes. So you don't have to so, go yeah. on the challenge. I, 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 I listen, I listen, ah, I listen, I listen to Dave Prodan's yeah. like, yeah. explanation, explanation of, of that. It blew my mind. That's too confusing, but <laughs> that is what's going to happen. So that they get cut halfway through. Yeah. The, the, top, um, the top 12 go through. And then the guys in the bottom half, or, or the top half of the Challenger series, then get put in for the next year's rounds. So how many so, people get cut off? So if you finish 13th on the CT at the cut-off, you have to do the Challenger series. Yeah, you're back on the back. Challenger. 
Yeah. Well, so there's only 12 people on tour for the last half of the year. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah, so you like. Wow, that's so crazy, it's like, you know how they say oh, the only way we can improve the tour is having a smaller tour because they can pick the more prime conditions? Mm -hmm. I think that's the idea. Uh, I remember them doing that. And it's Dropping more it intense. From 44 to 32. The Bobby, the Bobby Martinez. And, and it, I, well, I remember quite. I remember thinking at the time, like, that needed to happen because you would, the first two days of an event, you'd watch, there'd be hundreds of heats you didn't want to watch. <laughs> yeah. And then quite quickly, I started thinking, there's still hundreds of heats you don't want to watch. <laughs> yeah. it's 32 here. I and feel now, like now there's 12. Yeah, 24 <laughs> The tour 12. these days, though, I think, feel even, everyone's so good. Even, like, that seems really round harsh. one yeah. is, like, you want to watch. You're putting them on a pedestal here, guys. You're going to get there yourselves, aren't yeah. you? But, the, no, but do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. For me, anyway, if David Silva's against Alex Ribeiro, I still want to watch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, let's, get, let's go on next. to this Challenger Series thing, then, right? And is that working at the moment as a as a an ent you know as is it getting yeah. enough That's, entertainment like yeah. have have you, as I know we talked about the U.S. Open you didn't watch that much of the U.S. Open but that was because you were flying from Guam at the time it is I watched a little bit of it but I don't think Huntington's the best location mm. to hold something like that where you know you're trying to engage people to watch it as well yeah. um, you know that's the whole new format of what the WSL are trying to do is trying to get more viewership mm. so if you're going to hold an event that is like the Challenger Series you want it to be at Snapper you want it to be at some more prime locations mm. having a little bit more you know mushy Huntington is... It's, it's the money that great. would be the yeah. food Huntington, yeah. wouldn't but it? The problem with that, so you look at the first half, so those Challenger Series guys, they're going on to the first half of the tour, all pumping wave spots, and you've got them surfing in Hunt Huntington, then Burgery, Portugal, which isn't that pumping of a wave. It's just like... Well, yeah, but, it, it's not setting them up to go on to the, the CT, in my well, opinion. Well, where, where are the QSs that set you up to go on exactly, to Babylon? Yeah. Because no, there's no QS yeah. that, uh, apart from... Well, Maybe France and Portugal. And, yeah. and Morocco, and that's, that's that's what that. they're, I think that's what they're trying to achieve next year with a full with year. Snapper, right? Is Snapper and Holly Eva. Well, Holly Eva's this year, but yeah. the if more slight, like, and, you know, um, France. That's quite like, good Better quality waves the than France, so before. At the time of recording, so we've got we, we've got like about a six day turnaround on this. But, but, so there will be the France contest will be entering into October, its yeah, business yeah. end when, at the time this comes out, well. right? And that's one of the ones I worry about because I think I think France, you get a bad bank, a bad heat, yeah. you know, and and I think you're in trouble, and you can yeah. just go out and yeah. you can just bomb out, and the stakes are getting quite high. Thinking, you know, you go to Halewa and you know everyone's gonna get their chance to prove it okay you get low tide and the toilet bowl is draining but it's the same for everyone in france you can properly get like yeah. hung out to dry especially yeah. when you've got that many heats to run like when yeah. they do the cts they can take lay days and things like yeah. that right so that's one that, that, that i'm a little bit worried about but then um in, in terms of the portugal one that ribera dillas that that's the, i was gonna ask you then Ads, did you watch more of that one I watched a bit of it, yeah, but it, again... I'll be it, honest, was that because you knew we were all going to do this, or was it because no, 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 you were genuinely interested in... I actually like it as a break myself. I've, I've surfed oh, okay, quite a few right, times. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty cool little right-hander. Right-hander, um, right yeah. Right -ender. yeah. yeah. I call it burger, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a good surfer. But it is, but it is burger. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> uh, yeah, and <laughs> gestures. <laughs> yeah, it, it, is, it is a cool little break, but... Um, you know, it was quite meaty and it was quite mushy at points and, you know, the fog came in as well, so it was yeah. quite difficult it was a to watch. day of fog, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Good I, angle. I thought, um, especially for the women. But there yeah. was some really good, there was some really good challenging conditions oh. for the surface that made it look really easy as well. Yeah. I yeah. get to say, because Cal mentioned the ladies there, I get to say my little thing I said earlier, right? Twice in my, in my life travelling, I've seen a grommet surfing and been like, blown away and known they're going somewhere and the first time I put my I put the diary picture on Instagram a while ago I got my diary from 2000 in Durban and I'm talking about an 11 year old kid called Jordan Smith and I'm like describing his surfing the only other time I've seen a grommet and thought wow was I was in Japan and I saw this little girl absolutely shredding at a Kumihama and I was like what that must she must be going on to be one of the best surfers in the world like she must be and uh, and then I spotted her again for the first time on the weekend because it was Shino Mastuda the girl no, who got into the I think she got to the semi finals I, I remember so, seeing um, there she is Katie Simmons in Oceanside yeah. when she was 13 and, I was and not like, knowing who they were just thinking 
She can't can be like the normal standard. <laughs> <laughs> kind of I, like, I know like There's most daylight. people in California are a bit better than like Klingenif locals, but I was she, she's mental, and then she just won the U.S. Open at fifteen. Yeah. yeah. But Di- she must have been younger then. She must have been about 11, 12. Digressing a little bit, do you watch any of the Stab High stuff? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you watch like the Ladybirds? Yeah, 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 the oh, Aaron man. Brooks. Ah, uh, oh, they are just. Yeah. Well, that Simmers is in that, and now she just won the, a Challenger Series event. She's in the Ladybirds, like the under 15s or whatever. Mm. Have you, uh, did you see the footage of Sky Brown at the. Uh, was it Waco? Think, Waco, Waco. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, did. She was going crazy, wasn't she? Yeah. I didn't even know that she could surf like that. Yeah. <laughs> she's from Miyazaki, Miyazaki in Japan, and the standard there is super high. You yeah. Know? About three years ago, um, she did one of the first. Uh, Stab High events at the pool at Waco yeah. and there was her and Sierra Kerr at the very end and they had to do three or four surf offs because they were that close together wow. how good they were yeah. so you imagine you know she's just won a gold well, what, yeah. bronze medal at the Olympics, the Olympics. Yeah. and now she wants was to do and she wants to do yeah. both in France but uh, she obviously didn't notice that that would involve flying from Paris to that's why that's, <laughs> right. yeah. that's a big old trip for oh, the few yeah. days yes. <laughs> wow you know, yeah, and at the age that she'd be then, she'd still be young. But she'd be on her front, yeah. she'd be on her front side. Wouldn't yeah, she yeah. wouldn't even be in her prime, though, would she? Yeah. What's up, Dodd? She's on my list for next year. Oh, is she? Right. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, Sky Brat. She'd been asking to come on, has she? Alongside, Absolutely. Alongside, yeah. uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're sacking you, though. It's going to be Rhino and Jenny going to do it. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's going on Barbie doll. You should have uh, a low-tide yeah. Cody keep with her, Tom. Yeah. I reckon you'd take care. Oh, low-tide, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> get her stuck in the rip, innit? <laughs> like Craig Owen did to, uh, to Sam Baquette that day. You and I are going for a little walk. That's a... It's a good story. Oh, sorry, you've talked. You've talk- yeah, Greg, we were just talking before you guys arrived about a, a legendary heat where Greg took Sam Paquette like into a rip <laughs> and they got they were head they went side by side and then uh, Greg basically like started deliberately slowing down when he saw the set coming and let Sam think, right, I've really powered on and beaten him in this rip now and then Greg whoosh, went and got the wave and he was the heat winner. And in, in the car park afterwards came up to him, put his arm around him and went you fell for that then, didn't you, son? I said, <laughs> you and I are going for a little walk. <laughs> and ever since then, that's like said in the line of show, you and I are going for a little walk. <laughs> so there we are, right. Um, mm. Cool, right, that's, uh, let's have a look. We got, we got our, we d- 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 we've done a, f- a fag, a deliberate fag packet. Well, it's not a fag packet. Well, the, you've cut them out the same size as a fag packet, so yeah. it might as well be on the back the of a car- fag packet. It's the cardboard from the bottom of Ads' 99p cake from the, from, <laughs> from the store at the corner for his which, birthday. Which yeah. was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> and what, like we, a, what have we got there? You can fit in the Grego in the uh, bullet point as well. Yeah, we've got the Grego <laughs> in bullet point, yeah. So, oh... Right, two things left to do, right? Uh, if, you want, if you want surf stories, we have got one that we do need to get told on Crest, so maybe you guys can be the, uh, can, can be our... And then, we, and then we're going to get Rhino's laugh, he knows what this is. As you've heard this one already, so then we can get this out to the Grumpy Surfer audiences as well. Now, right? <laughs> Producer Dodd has pulled off this week, right? One of, one of the best boobs I've ever seen, right? After getting dropped in on by a close mate last week, right boys, and uh, his mate was on a brand new board, right, knocked his fin out on Dodd's board, right, so the mate was guilty, he said he was going to pay for the board, he took his board round to Dodd's house, right, and uh, this board's got uh, Futures fins on it, this brand new board, brand new, he's ridden three waves before he dropped in on Dodd and broke his fin <laughs> out, right, at this point it's still his fault, Dodd has FCS2 on his boards, right, Never seen a set of futures in his life. Totally absent-mindedly brings the board in and goes, "Oh yeah, right. I'll take it up to the. I'll take it up to Steve Charles, the ding repair guy for you, right? Yeah, no worries, right? Let me just get these fins out. Oh, he reps the box. Oh, oh, no. No. These are a bit stiff, you know? <laughs> Here you are, mate. Chuck us a tea towel, will you? So I don't have my hand as I get this one out. And then. Cracking fiberglass, <laughs> two missing pins. <laughs> the board has been ridden three times. It's classic. Oh my god. Did you take the box? Did or you take the pen? Just cracked it. Christ, <laughs> just cracked it. Anyway, oh, it's, an ex, it's an ex friend. That is. It's an ex friend. Had to get that one out there while I got you guys sat on no, the sofa. Right. There was that for our audience. I'm glad you had that reaction. Right, our, our, our last topic, I think, 
I've I've creased the <laughs> creased the cake packet forward slash bag packet now. <laughs> is literally um, asking you guys specifically then about the you know like which which events you're doing in the sort of immediate future now then isn't it and like you know when mm. when are you next off you know have you started booking things like how how do you plan this stuff we gotta yeah. start booking tonight tomorrow yeah, yeah we're yeah. gonna try going two weeks there's the Azores contest which I don't know is that the last one of this year's uh, at Azores, the moment yeah has... five th- QS it's a five it's a five thousand but so for the regionals I don't and um, we're doing it, but I still don't really understand. I thought because of the regionals, I thought they'd all just be one thousand, but one they, yeah, they've just got on one. one than another, yeah. yeah, they've just got at the moment. Well, this back half of the year, they've just got one five thousand, and the rest are one thousand. So that'll carry over into next year's points, then, will it? Yeah, so it's it's like it's almost like a, like a football season now. It's twenty twenty one slash twenty twenty two. Right. So you boys are going. So you you book in two weeks, stuff, yeah. right? Flights, yeah, to just the Azores, that's the next comp, and then I'm not sure what it is after that. Okay. Um, and you've got, just got to, you've got to weigh whatever March. a flight to the Azores is going to cost now, and that's it. Like, there's no, there's no organisations, no help, no, no nothing no, saying, you know, no. like when there's a Europeans on, you know, they put a charter on to get people in or whatever. Like, oh, no, nah, it's just sort yourself out and get there. Hire a car. Why, <laughs> when know. everyone else wants to go there and all the hotels are booked out. Yeah. It, it, at the minute, it's not looking terribly expensive. Yeah. And we're going to try and make a bit of a trip out of it as well. We're, pre- we're time, pretty good at being super tight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about, um, like, like in inverted commas, like a trading trip? Like, maybe, you know, yeah, like, yeah, to, question. like, competitions aside, you know, like, to look at something completely different, like bigger ways... Um, a month, month in Morocco, charge big surf. We, Go to India yeah. for a month, that kind I of mean, thing. Hawaii. We were more thinking, yeah. In the short term, the short I've been looking yeah. when we come back from Azores to go to Ireland, um, and surf some of them, like big pamper and stuff with Garage and them boys out there. Yeah. But um, that short term, and for the winter, I haven't got too much plans yet. I'd like to do. I kind of have my eyes set. I would like to go back to Oz, but um think Indo possibly next year for me just while it's like cold February time just go do a month or something yeah. I gotta get it definitely get away at some point get some pumping mm. waves not for a comp you know for me anyway that's my sort of and do you know what you're going to be going to in the new year then after so it's the Azores and that's it for 2021 have you sort of have you started going... is, it is about two weeks before these events that you have to plan it then is it uh, no yeah we, we got confirmed in about Oh, five days ago, something was it? Yeah, so it's just like right. So it's, yeah, it's finding out if you're in first because before it was the regional five thousand, you'd have people flying in from everywhere, and it would be really hard to get in. Mm. But now, because it's a European tour, it's kind of like everyone who was doing a one thousand. It's just the same people that are gonna do the five thousand. Like no one's really missing events, so we kind of thought we'd get in, but now we're in, we gotta start booking. Oh, right, okay. And yeah. then in the, you don't know what ones are in the spring yet that you're going to? Um, nothing's confirmed yet because of COVID and everything's yeah. tentative. Right. Oh, wow. Winter trip car? Uh, I'm hoping to jump on the island bandwagon. Uh, and then I'm going to try get to Morocco sometime next mm, year if yeah, I can. Yeah, you've logged some, some of your special Callum, Callum tunnel time in... Uh, in minutes. minutes, I think. <laughs> 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 what are you, as you got to trip this winter? Uh, I haven't, so don't ask me. So, 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 so. <laughs> well, I, I think I lost some of my brownie points with Guam, if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple of competitions this week, actually. Um, you know, I've got a jiu-jitsu comp on Wednesday, then a couple... Um, the Navy Surf Champs is the end of this week, so... Sick, good luck, mate. Where's that? Uh, down at Penhal. That's sick. So it'll be down there. Um, but I'm hoping to go to Morocco. That is a multiple surf, surf, surf champ in one of the categories of that event. Yeah, I've got, I got second in SUP. I've won the longboard. Don't really do that good in short Triple board. threat, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just hit it from all angles. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. If I enter them all, I've got to at least win fucking one of them. Yeah. <laughs> with, um, with the jiu-jitsu... Sell me on it. Does it cross over well? Because everyone seems to do jujitsu. Yeah. 
How does it cross over well, and in what way is it? Because I know loads of surfers cool. have done yeah. it, so. I think but I've never ju- spoke to someone who's I done it. I think being a jiu-jitsu book is all well, like, being like, thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, I want to do it, but I don't have the time. So the other, give you a little demo in a minute now, if you want <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, it's just, you might not be surfing tomorrow at all. Rear naked choke demos. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that I t- the reason why I started doing it was, I, I was, um, I was in, uh, based in North Devon again like a few years back, and I was kind of sick of the gym sort of stuff because I've been in gyms for quite a long time now. So I wanted to do something different between each of the swells. So I know a few MMA fighters of mine and uh, friends of mine, you know, asked them about that and said, well, I'll try jujitsu. And there was a purple belt lad um, that, that joined the unit and he said he wanted to start something up. And uh, that's basically how I started. And then I started getting into a little bit more and it was just the whole dynamic of um, learning how the body moves and um, there's lots of different ways of doing different techniques. It's just not like one set way, like karate is like a set cutter to do mm-hmm. things. And I, I just got hooked from from doing it because I just found it really interesting. And yeah, you get you know pretty pounded the first couple of years you're doing it, but that's all part and parcel of it. Yeah, you know it's it's like it's like being a grom and the process of yeah, learning and yeah. Yeah, and as you get better, you 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 see things in a different light, again, comparing it to surfing, the better you get, you get to see the read of, you know, how a break is breaking somewhere or where that set's coming from and what angle it's coming from, yes. depending on all those conditional things and environmental factors, you know, so it, it does tie in really nicely with that and that's really how I got into doing it. Nice. Does, yeah. it does it help you, do you think, like being calm under pressure? Yes. Because you're always getting attacked in jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah, so... As a beginner, you you will you do panic quite a bit because you know you, you, you can train with people something. like you know we could be trained together, but then I could be training with Rhino, so the the yeah. weight difference there is is quite significant, and that feeling of because of how small Pat is, yeah. <laughs> 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 Pat's obviously bigger. Yeah. Than that. Come on, <laughs> but yeah, so so that that feeling of of being trapped and and suffocated, yeah. you then have to learn how to control that emotion. Yeah. So again, if you want to, you know, term it in like a surfing sort of format, you know, bigger waves, yeah. hold downs, or yeah. you know, the pressure of competition. Yeah. You know, I've got to get this next wave. To, yeah, get to got need a six in the last two minutes. Yeah, or, exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, so you know, maintaining your calmness and stillness within that, within that period of time, to then start working your escapes to get back yeah. on top and. You know, and that, that's why I find yeah. it really interesting is because yeah. I don't really see it as a crossover. I just enjoy doing both things, right. yeah, yeah. you know, but I think anybody that gets into doing it, if they, can, if they are consistent with training, they will really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I do. That's oh, sick. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you because I'm gonna actually be able to speak to someone like who yeah. does it themselves. But that's yeah. cool. One question, sorry. Uh, would you miss a good surf for training if you no? You wouldn't. Ah, oh, right. no. That's a good question. So my 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 whole thing throughout this whole process, I've been training what nearly eight eight nine years now. My my whole thing has always been if there's a good swell running, I don't train or I try and do both. Which is a nightmare, yeah, because it absolutely ruins you, especially if the swell's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I wouldn't miss a surf just to go training. Um, but yeah, trips um, potentially go to Morocco, March, April, maybe maybe my last trip, but I don't think that's going to come off. And I'm hoping I've got a Indo boat trip penciled in for September next year. Oh, yes. Yeah, nice. that's not confirmed, but I'm like. Please let it happen. <laughs> 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 Mentalities or? Um, maybe. I'm not sure yet. So I did a podcast with the guys from Green Overhead. Uh, and right. um, and the guy, John Jameson, runs Shout the... Shout boys. Yes. He always, he always does the boat trips, doesn't he? Like, organises them. He organises them, yeah. yeah. I've been trying is, to like is he gonna bring a, Is he going to bring a couple of sharp eyes? I don't know. He keeps trying to get me to buy one. I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm not, I don't really want the app. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to go into board shapes. Like that, but. So then, the, then the boards these days, the sharp eyes. Yeah, yeah, I saw someone on one yesterday down here. They've started to show up in Wales now. Yeah, for sure. Mm. See, there's Brazilians oh, get everywhere, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, 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 like, I like my surfboards handmade by a fella that, that I go surfing with on a day-to-day basis. Like, like, to me, it's going to, uh, there's, you know, 
until the fellow who does that for me, my, my dear friend Luke Young, isn't making them anymore. I'm, uh, I, I, you know, the only thing I'd ever do with a good surfboard off the rack would be have a quick look at it and then take some photos. Yeah. But do you feel like you're like, like so it, yeah. do you feel like you've got the blinkers on and they're like, uh, I, st I rode one brand for ages and I changed and it was just like, oh my God, there's a whole new world of fun. I just believe, I believe in, I believe in magic. the person, <laughs> the, the, someone knowing my um, surfing, making the right board for me. Yeah, but what, yeah, he might not have the, <laughs> the view of your surfing that the other guy might have. Well, Sharp Eye has not seen me surf. But if he, he might have seen your stand, uh, like he yeah. might have seen our standard as surfing yeah. and yeah. gone, this is the board for that standard. This is my interpretation. And if it's a successful one, sooner or later, Luke will spot, <laughs> or, <laughs> spot what's going on and you know, make his own model that's slightly yeah, more I just adapted. Think, I just think the there's more yeah. fun out, like there's like there's yeah. different, you can write like different the right, interpretations. Oh, I'm spicy, yeah. Yeah. Have this. If, if, <laughs> come and have a look in the garage before you go, you know, I got big sing gloss. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I just feel like and, you know, each shaper's got their own yeah. take, on, take on surfing and the... Yeah. Well, he yeah. shaped me one of the best boards I've ever ridden yeah. and I've got another one being shaped by him now. No, moment. for sure. I think I feel he's a really good shape. I'm just saying like, I get what you're saying because a lot of people. You ride a Mayhem guys, and you ride a JS, they yeah, feel they try different. different. But yes, saying that, one of the best shortboards I've ever ridden was a Firewire Cymatic Slated Design. Exactly, and that's completely it was different to me. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Luke. But uh, yeah. yeah. Best, yeah, best shortboard I've ever had was, uh, was a Surf Prescriptions Doc Lausch. Brad Gerlach's no on way. board, and, and I got to talk to him, I met him. earlier this year. I yeah, met him in Newport. Yeah. Oh, did you? He tried to get me to come to the factory. I think he was trying to sell me a board. Me, me and Rhino <laughs> met him too, earlier this year, and I did as well, yeah. No way. Uh, anyway, now speaking of, of episodes previous and future, and we're going to, I want to say, with Crest, we want to get you as like, as in, as ads licensed to sort of come back once you've once you've finished your, uh, once you've had, once you've finished your 22 years, um, which is not that far out now, is it? It's, it's sometime no, next spring. Six months, yeah. So ads, you're gonna you're gonna sit down and with Rhino and I, and we, we're gonna sort of we're gonna probe your life story out of you. I'd like to listen about. to that. I'm gonna make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't wait. Um, and then yeah, you know. In terms of you know, you mentioned you were talking about I'm going to try and do a literary link here. Now I was thinking of it, I scribbled it on the on the cake packet. You were talking about jujitsu as a crossover. So in terms of crossovers, this three way crossover between the Grumpy Surfer, Crest in partnership with Elusive and the Pagans has been a real pleasure to be involved in. So I would like to, I'd like to thank you guys massively for your time, and it's been it's a it's been a real pleasure to have you down in Wales. For a flying visit today, and I've been Wales. Yeah. I tell you what, I've you're, been Wales, you're, yeah. you're lucky you haven't cracked on my Welsh jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hot dogs for tea, boys, and all that. <laughs> Love um, a bit of Twin Towns, even <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for having us, mate. Yeah, Appreciate pleasure. it. Fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Any chance to chat shit whatsoever? Yeah. Cheers, boys. Yeah. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers.